What's going on guys, Algen Anastasio here with FlightPath.com and in this video I'm just going to quickly show you the flight modes that the Tello can do as well as I was able to find a remote control that works with the app and you can actually control your Tello with a remote control. So if you guys haven't seen the unboxing and setup, make sure you guys watch that video first. This is really just to demonstrate what the flight modes can do in the Tello app. So of course, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure we're all connected and as we are connected here through the app, you can actually see that I have a Wi-Fi signal, 92% battery at this moment. What I wanna do is just put the Tello up in the air, show you what the flight modes can do, and we'll walk through those one by one and I'll show you after flying it for about a week, uh, show you some of the things that I've learned uh, with the flight modes. So the first flight mode I want to show you guys is the throw and go. Now, Ideally this is where you just want to be able to start the motors up and toss it up in the air and have it fly on its own. But there's something in the app that was a little bit confusing the first time uh, I actually launched it. So when I launched the app, the, the app tells me to click on the icon above and then throw the aircraft upward after five second countdown. The aircraft will automatically hover in place only use this feature in an open area. So the one thing is when you're reading it and it says you throw the aircraft upward after five seconds, which is technically in a way it seems like it's incorrect because if you throw it after five seconds, the motor shut off at the five second mark, which means your Tello will just fall to the ground. What you wanna do is throw it within those first couple seconds of activating it. So let me demonstrate exactly how you're supposed to do it. What you wanna do is click on the icon above, it says throw and go, click on that icon, Motors will start up, five, four, three, two, and then you throw it within those first couple seconds. So like I said, if you read the app, it says f to throw it up in here after five seconds. Let me just show you exactly what that does, and I'll show you what, how it looks at the five second mark. When it hits five seconds, the motor's actually shut off. So I learned it the hard way, don't throw it after five seconds, throw it before five seconds. So let me activate it again. It says throw and go, hit the button. Now it says five, four, three, two, one. So the motors are actually off. Now I didn't want to do it right there, but as you can see, the motors are actually off. So you don't want to throw it after five seconds, you want to throw it before five seconds. So the next flight mode we'll do is up and out. And this is what's known as, in a way, it's a droney. Uh, you'll know if you've flown a Spark or if you've flown a Mavic, this is actually kind of the up and out, so it's a pullback. So what you want to do is have the drone facing you at a pretty low angle because you can't really tilt the gimbal up, so you want to be able to be in the frame. So you want to bring the drone pretty low, almost right in front of you. And to activate it, you're going to hit the flight mode, you're going to hit up and out. Once you hit that, it'll say the uh, record a short video while flying up and backwards. So once you hit start, now the camera will fly back on its own and fly upward. Now, unlike the Mavic, uh, where you do some of these smart flight modes, the, it'll actually come back to you. The Tello doesn't, so it'll do the up and out, and then it'll stay there. So you actually have to manually fly it back. The next flight mode we'll do is circle. So what you want to do is position the drone also facing towards you uh, at another low angle. You want to be able to be within the frame. Make sure you're framing it up in the app. Go ahead and hit flight mode. Now circle, all it's going to do is from the point it's at in front of you, it's just going to create a circle right around the subject. So you don't want to be too far because it doesn't, it doesn't create a big circle. It creates a pretty small circle. So you just want to have it Right now, I think I'm about six feet away from it, maybe seven, and it'll just create a circle around that subject. So I'll go into flight mode, hit circle, hit stop, hit start, and it'll now automatically fly in a circle around the subject. Once it gets to the starting point, it'll of course stop once again right there. And then if you wanted to move it, you just have to manually fly it yourself. There you go. So that was circle. Now the next mode we're gonna do is bounce mode. I'm not exactly sure what bounce mode is ideal for. Uh, all it's really doing is just going to have the drone kind of go up and down in a specific area wherever you activate it from. So hitting bounce mode, hit start, 
And as you can see, the drone will just go up and down from where you started it from. There you go, that was bounce mode. Next mode we'll do is 360. And this is a little bit different than circle. Circle actually goes around the subject. 360 is really uh, when you bring it to a specific location. Right now I'm just gonna show you within camera and you hit 360 and hit start. All it's gonna do is do a slow video and it, from its place it'll just turn around in a 360 and record your video. So right now it's just slowly turning around. And once it gets to the end, it'll go and stop right there. So the last flight mode we have is flips. Now this can only be performed when you have 50% or higher battery capacity. So if you're under 50%, you're not able to perform any of these flips. Right now I have about 80%. So let's bring this up and I'll show you the few ways that you're able to do some of these flips. So when you activate flips, there is a box that'll come up. And within that box, what you're able to do is now swipe in multiple directions, whether it be left to right, up, down, left, right, right, left, from the angle, from the corners to the corners. And depending on which angle you swipe at, that's how the drone will actually flip. So let's do one that goes from left to right. So ideally it'll be flipping like this. There you go. Let's do one bottom to top. So it should go from back over to the front. And very impressed with the, even the, the uh, VPS on this or the vision positioning right now, even after it does a flip, it'll auto correct and try to get back straight. So here's one that's gonna go from top left to bottom right. And top to bottom. And it's just as simple as that. So there's eight possible types of flips you can do. Um, so make sure you guys try all of those when you get a chance. Now in order for you to get more precise movements, what you're gonna do is pick up a remote. Now I actually went through a, another remote uh, that I thought would work as a game vice one, but I come to find out that it's actually an Android remote. So it didn't work with my iPhone. So I picked up this one and this one's a PXN, uh, I believe it's a Game Speedy, and I'll put out the information down below which remote this is. This one's a little bit pricier. There are a few other ones on the market that work. The thing is I had an iPhone X, and some of the remotes didn't work with Apple devices. So you have to find one that's MFI or MFI uh, that's approved to work with Apple devices. Once you connect everything Bluetooth, so the connection between the remote and the phone is actually through Bluetooth, and then the phone itself is still connects to the Tele via Wi-Fi. The cool thing after flying it a little bit, the ability to do things like flips while you're moving. So you can control the drone, go forward, backwards, left to right, and at the same time do those flips. That was pretty much the cool uh, factor that I found when you're using the remote, as well as a tactile feel for you to get more precise movements. And the latency actually wasn't that much at all. So let's take this thing up and just show you a couple of things you can do uh, with the remote. Now, if you wanna know what all the controls do, all you have to do is take on the settings icon here on the right hand side, hit Bluetooth, and then hit game control diagram. Now this diagram comes up and it shows you all the things that you could do with it. Hit R2 and Y for you to take off. If you wanna do multiple styles of flips, there's L2 and then you use the pad. And then if you wanna take a photo, R1, and if you take a video, L1. So let's take it up and I'll show you some of the controls through the app. R2 and Y launches it. And here we go. So now I'm controlling everything with my remote and the latency isn't too bad at all. Let me show you exactly. And I'll kind of show you the remote at the same time. Uh, if I go right and I go left, forward, back. So it is still pretty responsive. Now there is a little bit of wind out here. So of course it's gonna uh, slow it down just a little bit. But if I go into fast mode, it's a little bit more responsive. So now it's in fast mode and you can see it kind of whips around a little bit better. So 
So like I mentioned, if you wanted to do things like going forward or moving and at the same time uh, doing a flip, let me show you an example of that one. So right now I'm gonna go forward towards you and then perform a flip. So here we go. It's, oh, it's fighting the wind just a little bit. Let me go a little bit lower. Oh. All right, getting a little windy out here. So let's go forward and then there you go. Let's do another one. Let's go forward and then flip backwards. There it is. Really cool to be able to do some flips while moving. So let's do another one. Let's go, let's go forward and flip right. There you go. So I'm doing and controlling everything through the remote. And then if you want to land it, all you have to do is hit Y and R2. You can land it right there in your hand. So there it is guys, just a quick demo to show you some of the flight modes that the Tello can do uh, if you're using just your phone. Also, like I mentioned, I was able to pick up a remote control that can control it through the app, which the app controls, of course, the drone. If you are looking into the market and looking at the Tello, I'm flying it outside where there's a little bit of wind. Uh, when I was flying it this past week inside, no wind, you have a lot more control. The, the cameras on the bottom can really sense the ground a little bit more and you have a little bit more stable of a flight. Uh, really fun indoors. Outside, the wind does take it a little bit, and, and if it does have to struggle, it does deplete your battery. So uh, even though it, you can fly it outside, you're going to want to probably fly this type of toy drone indoors. Once I got the remote, I think it got a lot more fun. My flying was a lot more precise, and I was able to actually put some uh, rings up and try to fly through them to make it look like I'm flying through a kind of a race course and I think that's what it's really more fun for these type of toy drones uh, yeah you could take them outside uh, but like I said the wind is really gonna take this and deplete your battery and you're just not gonna have as enjoyable of a flight because the footage from here will be a lot of will be pretty shaky if you're flying in the wind I will make sure I leave the product information for this remote as well as some other ones that I saw online. Like I mentioned, I purchased this one mainly because it was available. Some of the other ones that are a little bit more affordable uh, weren't shipping for like another few weeks. So I did want to pick one up just to make sure it worked because I did buy another one that only worked on Android devices. This one does work for iPhone. That's about it, guys. If you guys got some value from my video, please don't forget to hit that like button. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Aldrin Astacio with FlightPath.com. See you in the next one. Take care.